Alors, euh, alors bonsoir, bonsoir tout le monde. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a privilege for me to be here with my cabinet colleagues uh, at this important cabinet retreat after a summer uh, of uh, discussing with Canadians the priorities that they see as important for our government. We've obviously heard in every part of the country the importance of working on economic measures that speak to affordability issues, that speak to things as important as the cost of housing, as dealing with the global phenomenon of inflation. Uh, so our focus here as a cabinet will be to share with colleagues the uh, things we've heard over the summer, but more importantly, continue the hard work uh, that our government wants to do on issues that are important to Canadians, and principally, of course, uh, those are issues around uh, economic uh, questions, affordability, uh, inflation, uh, and what we can do uh, to better serve Canadians in every part of the country. Alors, moi, je suis très content d'être ici avec mes collègues du Conseil des ministres à Vancouver pour ce retrait du cabinet du Conseil des ministres. C'est une occasion pour nous de partager avec nos collègues, avec le Premier ministre, euh, qu'est-ce que nous avons entendu au courant de l'été. Nous avons été très occupés au courant de l'été, comme tous les Canadiens. Nous avons entendu partout au pays des questions euh, importantes, surtout des questions économiques, des questions liées euh, au coût de la vie, des questions liées à l'abordabilité, euh, le coût du logement, euh, des défis en termes de main d'œuvre, euh, Et c'est une occasion de continuer le travail que nous avons fait déjà depuis 2015 comme gouvernement, mais de constater des pistes de solutions qui sont ouvertes à notre gouvernement. Et c'est un travail que nous avons bien hâte de faire au cours des prochaines semaines et des prochains mois. So with that, on prendra vos questions. Allez-y, Madeleine. Nada, vous parlez de l'inflation. Dans quatre jours, vous allez avoir un nouveau chef conservateur. Si c'est Pierre Poilièvre, il vous attaque sur le prix du pain, il vous attaque sur le prix du beurre. À part de dire qu'il y a un problème d'inflation, qu'est-ce que vous allez faire concrètement pour restreindre la pression sur le portefeuille des Canadiens, premièrement? Et euh, comment vous allez répondre à Pierre Poilièvre si c'est lui le chef du Parti conservateur? Bien, premièrement, nous ne sommes pas ici pour constater le prochain chef du Parti conservateur. Les, les conservateurs vont choisir le prochain chef le week-end qui s'en vient. Alors, notre focus comme gouvernement, c'est des questions, comme j'ai dit, euh, d'économie, des questions d'abordabilité, euh, des questions d'inflation. Euh, nous n'avons pas commencé ce travail euh, il y a seulement quelques mois. Nous avons depuis déjà plusieurs années travailler en termes d'amener de des pistes de solutions, des nouvelles politiques. Je pense, par exemple, à la prestation canadienne pour l'enfant. Je pense, par exemple, aux questions de garderie, les annonces que nous avons faites au cours des derniers mois, surtout euh, quant aux, euh, aux idées de de, de, du logement abordable. Alors, ce n'est pas l'arrivée d'un nouveau chef conservateur euh, qui va faire en sorte que nous allons concentrer sur ces questions-là. Ça fait déjà plusieurs années que nous concentrons sur ces questions-là et nous avons l'occasion ici à Vancouver de nous redonner euh, un plan euh, quant à, à, à ces questions importantes et le choix d'un chef conservateur, franchement, ça ne nous appartient pas. Can you say that in English, please, sir? Can we get a repeat of that in English? So, uh, obviously, uh, it won't surprise you, but liberal ministers here in Vancouver at this cabinet retreat uh, are not the ones that are going to be choosing uh, the next conservative leader. Uh, that will be left to conservatives Uh, who, will, uh, who will do that, who will announce the choice of their leader in Ottawa. Our focus is not at all on the next Conservative leader. Our focus is to continue the work we've been doing as a government for Canadians, delivering for Canadians, principally on questions uh, of importance in terms of economic uh, issues, affordability, uh, housing, inflation, things as important as childcare agreements that have lowered the cost of childcare for Canadians in every province, uh, things as important as the Canada Child Benefit. So we have been working on these affordability issues for many years. We understand the anxiety of Canadians, and that is the focus of our work here in Vancouver. We're not here to, uh, to spend a lot of time worrying about who the Conservative Party will choose as their next leader. Monsieur Leblanc, vous dites que ça fait des mois, des années que vous travaillez sur des solutions, mais ça fait quand même quelques mois où l'inflation est vraiment plus marquée. Est-ce qu'il y a une façon d'aider spécifiquement les Canadiens moins bien nantis, par exemple, qui ont de la misère à pratiquement se nourrir en ce moment? 
Bien, bien sûrement. C'est le travail de la ministre des Finances et de l'ensemble de notre gouvernement. Nous discutons toujours euh, qu'est-ce que nous pouvons faire pour mieux aider euh, surtout ceux et celles euh, qui, dont, qui sont dans une situation économique vulnérable. Je pense par exemple aux personnes âgées où nous avons augmenté et bonifié selon le coût de la vie les prestations euh, de la sécurité de la vieillesse pour les personnes qui ont 75 ans et plus. Mais nous n'avons pas à fini notre travail Quant à aborder les questions de l'inflation, la question du coût de la vie, c'est une discussion continue et nous sommes évidemment ouverts à toutes sortes de bonnes idées pour continuer un travail que nous avons fait déjà depuis plusieurs années. Minister, I, I realize to say you're not playing a role in picking who's going to lead the Conservatives, but you're obviously paying attention to it. And I wonder that whoever emerges from this leadership on, on Saturday, uh, we're nine months into this year and there's been no new direct response to deal with the cost of living from this government, struggling to deliver basic services at airports, passports and on immigration. These are all issues that this new leader is going to attack this government on. So how do you push back against that when there's been no direct response to immigration and seven years in power struggling to deliver on some of the nuts and bolts of government services? Thanks, David. I think there's about seven questions in one. So <laughs> let's unpack some of that. When I was a when I was elected in 2015, we had about 260,000 people coming to this country a year. In 2022, we're going to welcome 430,000 Canadians. And that's after getting through a pandemic where we were very close to hitting our numbers. And so the immigration system is critical for us to maintain our quality of life. And we are, quite frankly, ahead of ahead of schedule in getting permanent residents settled here in Canada, so that's a good news story. When it comes to uh, the delivery, Minister Ian can certainly speak on that. We sit on that committee together. If you take a look at where we were in, Janu in, Ju in June and where we are now, there has been progress. We have seen an improvement at airports. We've seen an improvement in passports. I made an announcement about a new passport office opening in Red Deer. We have other announcements that we are, we are making. And as Tourism Minister, you know, David, I want this stuff to work. It's got to work. And we're not where we want to be, but the progress is there. And I'm going to push back a little bit on saying there's nothing new in the window. Since Budget 22, $8.9 billion in our affordability plan. We're talking about a 10% increase in OAS. We're talking about a $500 uh, credit for people struggling with housing. We're also talking about indexation, indexation of all of our benefits. And right here in British Columbia, we're talking about thousands of dollars a month in the pockets of British, Columbian, in, British Columbians in Alberta. It's $5,600 on average. And think about it. We signed a child care agreement with the United Conservative Party of Alberta and that doesn't deal with the price of bread or the price of meat or the price of fuel because that's a global inflation issue but 5600 bucks a month 5600 bucks over the course of a year does put more money in the pockets of Canadians and I appreciate that minister but a lot of those things were that were, were promises that were made prior to the inflation crisis reaching the levels that it's at you're seeing provincial governments and provincial election campaigns where money is being handed out to deal with this and and, and, and we're not seeing sort of specific action from the federal government. So should we anticipate that we'll come out of this retreat with no new cost of living announcements from the government and you're just going to stay the course on the programs that were baked into the fiscal plan in the last budget? Our focus as a government is making sure that we have the backs of, of Canadians when it comes to making, not just making ends meet, but making sure that Canadians are able to prosper. And I'm going to go back to $511 billion that we invested in the lives of Canadians in, our, in provincial governments, in businesses, in communities to get us through the pandemic. And what we learned through the pandemic is that we know how to have the backs of Canadians and we're doing that during this high inflationary cycle as well. Uh, David Aiken, Global News. Uh, hello, Ministers. Good evening. Uh, question for Minister LeBlanc. Uh, just on uh, the um, relationship with the Premiers in the provinces. We're going to have two new Premiers very shortly in British Columbia and in Alberta. And I wonder if you could speak to the role the provinces you'd like, the, the role you'd like the provinces to play in terms of helping uh, deal with economic issues, things like interprovincial trade barriers, uh, labor mobility. I was talking to Minister Qualtro about that today. Can you speak a little bit about the, the tone and tenor of where the federal provincial relationship is on working on economic issues? So I, I'm very encouraged by conversations I've had with premiers across the country in terms of their willingness to collaborate with us on economic measures. 
uh, in their own jurisdictions, and that's the genius of the Canadian Federation. Different provinces and territories can experiment with different policies, and different regions can have different solutions that may uh, speak to particular regional needs. So we've seen a number of provinces take steps, for example, on affordability issues. Uh, we've seen a number of provinces, including the province of Alberta, the province of Ontario, take very bold steps in terms of removing interprovincial trade barriers, which at a time of inflation, global supply chain challenges, should be a reminder to us that creating a truly free trade zone in Canada uh, should be the least that we can work on collectively. And I'm very encouraged by what premiers are telling me. We're hoping to have a meeting of internal trade ministers uh, later in September where I think we can make very significant progress in removing the last few barriers that remain. It's complicated, but um, provinces and premiers that talk to me are enthusiastic about doing this work. And frankly, it gives us an opportunity to collaborate with some provincial governments with which we don't always agree on other issues. So it, it brings together a coalition of premiers and provincial governments uh, on some of these economic issues that I think should give our government a, a real reason for optimism. Uh, thank you. And I have a question from Minister Boissonneau as well um, about the new premier that we're likely, what we're going to see in Alberta. As an Albertan and as the Alberta representative in cabinet, what's your message to your colleague about what seems to be a slate of candidates that of varying degrees seems to want to withdraw Alberta from many federal things, police, pensions, sovereignty acts, all sorts of things from many different candidates. Um, do you have a message to say as a federal government, how do we reach out to everyday Albertans to make sure they see the value of a federal government, they understand what a federal government is all about, and uh, it looks like, you know, for better or for worse, you're going to be, you as a federal government, is going to be a target of the new Alberta Premier. And how do you, how do you deal with that uh, as an Albertan and as a representative of Alberta in a federal cabinet? Well, David, I appreciate the question. And as a young person growing up in Alberta, I watched what happened when, you know, Premier Lahey would take shots at the at the federal government. So provinces take shots at federal governments all the time. It's sort of like the, the, the easiest play in the book. But I will say very clearly that Albertans are Canadians and proud Canadians. And I am a very proud Canadian and a very proud Albertan. And look, when I was on the doors in, in 21, in the middle of a global pandemic, the number one thing that residents of Edmonton Centre asked me to go back to Ottawa to work on was climate change. In the middle of a global pandemic, while we had heat waves going on and smoke in the air, they wanted their COVID supports, they also wanted childcare, but they wanted to make sure that as a federal government, we would deal with the pressing change, pressing issue of climate change. And so, look, when I sat down with Premier Kenny within a, a week or two of being uh, minister, uh, announced as minister for Alberta, minister of tourism, associate minister of finance, yeah, we had some things that we didn't agree on, but we got very close to, very quickly to the issues that were common ground. And I know working with Minister LeBlanc and colleagues across country, we want Alberta to do what Alberta's always done, which is punch above its weight in confederation. We've got 12% of the population, 16% of the GDP. We've got one of the top places in the world for artificial intelligence machine language. We are the fourth largest producer of oil and gas in the world, and a lot of that comes from Alberta. And guess who's leading the charge to get to net zero? It's the Alberta-based oil and gas industry. And so, David, there's a lot that we can uh, agree with and work with on the next premier. And it it is central and focused on Alberta being successful inside of a thriving federation. Bonjour, ma question pour uh, Monsieur Leblanc. Je vais, je vais vous donner une autre chance de vous prononcer sur le, le prochain uh, chef conservateur. À, à quoi est-ce que vous vous attendez d'un parti conservateur dirigé par Pierre Poilièvre? Puis comment est-ce que vous vous préparez à ça? Vous êtes un habitué de la joute parlementaire. Uh, Dites-moi tout. Ben, ben écoutez, moi, on ne connaît pas le prochain chef conservateur. Le pays saura ça samedi. Comme j'ai dit, ça ne vous surprendra pas. Vous êtes aussi habitué à la colline parlementaire. Ce n'est pas le gouvernement libéral qui va choisir le prochain chef conservateur. Ce n'est pas un focus pour nous. Nous avons du travail important comme gouvernement à faire pour les Canadiens. Ça, c'est le focus pour nous. Monsieur Poliev, si c'est lui, est bien connu au Parlement. Euh, il y a d'autres candidats qui sont bien connus au Parlement aussi. Euh, Ce n'est pas une surprise pour quelqu'un qui arrive de l'extérieur. Euh, vous, euh, vous avez vu ces candidats-là à la Chambre des communes euh, et aux cour euh, au courses euh, au leadership. Alors, ce n'est pas un focus pour nous. Nous allons continuer de faire le travail qui s'impose 
Euh, moi, j'étais dans un parti d'opposition au Parlement. C'est différent que d'être au gouvernement. Moi, je suis pas mal content et chanceux d'être du côté du gouvernement parce que ça nous donne collectivement la chance de faire du travail qu'on ne peut pas faire en opposition. J'ai passé neuf ans comme député d'opposition. Alors moi, je suis focusé à faire le mieux que je peux avec mes collègues sur les questions gouvernementales. Bon, bien justement, parlant de gouvernement, vous êtes ministre des Affaires gouvernementales. Vous voyez, pendant la campagne électorale, dans la campagne électorale à Québec, il y a le gouvernement sortant et l'opposition officielle libérale qui proposent tous les deux des baisses d'impôts. En même temps, les deux réclament du gouvernement fédéral qu'il hausse le transfert canadien en santé. Est-ce qu'ils sont en train de, de perdre un pouvoir de négociation ou de se tirer dans le pied en faisant ça? Ça, ce n'est pas nouveau non plus. L'idée que les provinces veulent baisser les impôts et blâmer le gouvernement fédéral qu'ils n'ont pas assez d'argent, ça, ce n'est pas nouveau. Ça, ça date probablement depuis la Confédération. Alors, qu'est-ce que nous avons dit, c'est que nous serons là pour appuyer un système de soins de santé publics à la hauteur des attentes des Canadiens. Nous allons demander aux provinces de s'assurer que l'investissement fédéral obtient des résultats pour les patients et pour les Canadiens. Nous ne sommes pas intéressés à payer les surplus dans certaines provinces, les baisses d'impôts dans d'autres provinces. C'est au premier ministre de ces provinces-là d'expliquer leur choix. Nous avons dit qu'on sera un partenaire fiable, comme nous étions dans un contexte de COVID, pour les soins de santé. Et c'est une discussion que nous avons hâte à avoir avec les premiers ministres des provinces, euh, probablement à l'autre côté de l'élection au Québec. On va prendre une dernière question. Last question. Rachel Ayala with CTV. Uh, so you're a minority government heading into the fall with a deal with the NDP and conservatives likely chopping at the bit to replace you. Uh, with that in mind, are you feeling any pressure to see parts of the NDP deal through this fall? Is that factoring into conversations at Cabinet? So, uh, again, I uh, uh, serve on an oversight committee with three NDP members of Parliament and two colleagues of mine in the Liberal caucus. Uh, We're very confident that the 27 commitments that Mr. Singh and the Prime Minister made to Canadians uh, will be enacted. Uh, we, uh, once a month, take stock of our progress on those commitments. It is a very positive, constructive conversation we have with the NDP. Canadians wanted more focus on governing and less focus on politics. That's exactly what this uh, agreement, supply and confidence agreement, allows us to do. I am absolutely convinced that every one of the 27 commitments that the Prime Minister and Mr. Singh made uh, will be acted upon, will be in place. Uh, we're on a schedule agreed upon with the NDP uh, that gives me a great deal of confidence. So I am eternally optimistic uh, that that will have been a great experiment for Canadians in parliamentary democracy. Uh, can I get you to repeat that in French? <laughs> On va le répéter pour Madeleine. Alors, uh, <laughs> moi... Moi, euh, moi, je suis euh, très confiant dans l'entente que nous avons conclue, le premier ministre a conclue avec M. Singh. Il y a 27 engagements que les deux chefs ont pris pour les Canadiens. Moi, avec deux de mes collègues libéraux et trois députés NPD, on siège sur un comité qui prend un constat, qui regarde le progrès conjoint que nous faisons euh, sur ces 27 items. Je demeure complètement confiant que nous allons euh, mettre en place toutes ces, tous ces engagements-là à l'intérieur des échéanciers que M. Singh et M. Trudeau euh, se sont donnés. Euh, C'est une conversation constructive, positive et focusée sur les enjeux qui sont importants pour les Canadiens. Les Canadiens nous ont demandé de passer moins de temps sur la politique partisane et plus de temps à gouverner et à s'occuper des questions importantes pour les Canadiens. Et c'est précisément qu'est-ce que cette entente va permettre à ce Parlement de réaliser. Et moi, je suis euh, très optimiste. Merci And beaucoup, tout le monde. Je vais parler. Je juste un petit follow-up. Has anyone in the government spoken with the NDP and Jagmeet Singh about fall priorities for the Liberals? Are they part of that conversation? Uh, uh, my colleagues in the Liberal Caucus and the NDP had a meeting, I think, last week of the. Uh, oversight Committee. We've agreed to meet in person again in a few weeks in Ottawa. Uh, so these are ongoing monthly discussions we have with the NDP. As you know, the Prime Minister met with Mr. Singh uh, uh, last, uh, last spring in, in, at the end of the session. Uh, so that won't surprise you that this is an ongoing and active conversation. The House leaders speak regularly. Uh, so we're going to return to Parliament 
uh, and focus on continuing to implement, as we agreed upon with Mr. Singh, the commitments in the Supply and Confidence Agreement. Thank you. 